everyone and welcome to our Sunday Jazz Higher Time Frame Analysis and a look back in the week and a look for the week ahead to see uh, what's going on in the world and what's going on in the markets. Well, at least the markets that we cover anyways. <laughs> We've got no special requests this week and we have Daniele back with us. Um, he's back, uh, officially back and he's back uh, from the jungles of Brazil, um, ready for action uh, every day here. So. Um, Without further ado, let's have a look and see uh, from a fundamental side of things what's actually happening out there. Happy Sunday, bud. How's things? Hey, hey, Kiran. Hey, hey, happy, <laughs> happy, happy, and happy to be back with <laughs> basically two arms, two legs, my head on 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 the on the chest. So all good. So uh, came out of the jungles pretty pretty nicely. So uh, and healthy. So everything good. Um, so and yeah, welcome to this week's um, market jazz chill out and week ahead prep episode. And um, I think it's gonna be a fun one because there has actually been quite a lot happening during the week. So um, why don't we just take a quick uh, look or uh, do a little recap at what happened last week and especially on Friday, since we had um, yeah U.S. retail sales coming out. And we also assumed um, on Friday that they may come out uh, good since, yeah, you might assume, okay, it's Christmas period and it's usually the season um, for retail to flourish. But man, did those numbers disappoint. So um, the numbers were forecasted to be flat, um, but the actual retail numbers for uh, retail sales numbers on uh, for December came out at neg almost negative 2%. Um, and not only that, um, the uh, by the way, the industrial production and consumer sentiment uh, numbers disappointed as well. Um, so the main reason for the uh, negative sa uh, retail sales numbers were um, the increase in prices um, and uh, supply shortages due to the Omicron variant um, and thereby basically yeah, worker absenteeisms. So the uh, yeah, shelves in the in the supermarkets and everywhere were empty. Nobody was there to fill them up, um, so we had a, a bit of a uh, yeah supply issue that there, um, and uh, that all in all, like the numbers, yeah, really disappointed and sent the stock market basically south, uh, or continued to send them south on, um, on Friday, um, and we'll see in a bit what that means um, in the big picture chart wise. But let's just move on um, FA wise what happened as well a little bit of fun things uh, so or more or less fun things let's put it that way um, we had the inf US inflation data coming out for December 21 um, and as you can see on a yearly basis uh, yeah the inflation data was basically stair step stepping its way up um, from 1.5% in January last year to 7% in December last year year so um yeah thereby making a 39 year high so uh let's why don't we just change that to a 25 year chart you can see we're surpassed um the inflation numbers from uh late to from the late 2000s so uh, 2007 around that um and then if we max that out you can see um yeah we surpassed that one as well that high so we came into levels from um yeah i'd say early the early 80s um so uh that is obviously a bit um let's say uh, scary to see um and um yeah of course like the fed governors had um or have to react and of course uh have to intervene uh so <clears throat> um the, as a result the fed is very likely to raise the interest rates um in march this re this year um and of course they're gonna finish their tapering process in march as well and we may even see two to three um, more interest rates uh, interest rate hikes this year as well so now we're talking about uh four interest rates um hikes this year potentially um and i'd say yes uh, that may be a somewhat of a little party pooper for the stock markets in the short term um of course um but only, I'd say, uh, until the stock market and the uh, economy sh uh, show signs that, hey, um, we're not really suffering from these rate hikes too much. Um, of course, that all depends on other factors like um, how that Omicron situation develops and so on. Um, and the supply side of the economy as well. 
But um, if I'd say the, the, the economy uh, reacts okay to that, um, I would say it is economically not uh, that generally bad to raise the interest rates, especially in the face of the ex uh, inflation issue we're currently experiencing. Um, and of course, we're, we're going to be able to measure the real economic uh, effects in mid or late 22 um, or further um, yeah, as the monetary policy measures unfold themselves during the year. So uh, very interesting times. Why am I, uh, why am I even talking about that? Um, of course, um, yeah, this or why is that actually important to us as traders or day traders, swing traders or investors? Well, um, it's as you can see right here, it's probably gonna add uh, more volatility into the markets this year. Um, and of course, for us as day traders, um, volatility is opportunity. So um, I guess it's great to prop up your education uh, or your trading education. So we're actually starting with our future day trader education program tomorrow. So um, if you're still like considering uh, whether you should do this or not, you got still time for tomorrow um, to apply um the futures for, for our uh, program right here after tomorrow i'd say evening or night will close out the application um but um you're still able to apply until then and then i guess the next um yeah the next term will start at i'd say um at the end of q2 or maybe early q3 um so that just as a little side note um, to what's coming this year. Um, but let's just jump right back to the news. Um, what ha what happened as well? Um, so as also mentioned in recent um, pre-market prep episode, um, the crude oil market uh, market is pretty hot right now. And in fact, it experienced a fourth straight weekly gain um, this week. So um, yeah, that is pretty pretty um yeah impressive i'd say um reasons being stated that um yeah basically the ukraine and russia situations the tensions that are going on there and potentially may cause also uh, supply issues um we've been reporting about that topic um regularly um and of course if something develops here that may, may impact the, the 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 markets heavily um fa wise will of course report about that um as well um but also as other reasons um there were mentioned um yeah the omicron variant effects on the economy but also further restrictions turning out to be softer than expected so um yeah that obviously um heats up the uh, the demand side of oil and um brings optimism into the markets and um as well yeah as mentioned boosts the demand side of uh, of of oil and also gas uh, so interesting things um will also or kiran will basically dip into the markets in a bit um to show you the charts um but let's take a look first of all at what's going on next week we have a holiday tomorrow so tomorrow is a uh, happy mlk day uh or yeah basically a us mlk day so uh it's gonna be a holiday you can see um the markets have a shortened period i don't think they there are even open tomorrow um or at least i'd say they're not tradable um we want to be day, in the uh, yeah day. i won't be trading yeah. anyways yeah. yeah yeah so um you don't you want to be trading when the when the liquidity is there when the volatility is there and usually in these kind of um yeah strange strange holiday days um the markets is isn't even open or partly open so tomorrow is gonna be um yeah Probably we won't even do a uh, a pre market prep episode. Maybe we will. We'll see. Probably we'll. No. Nope. We'll <laughs> nope. Probably we will just there continue on Tuesday because there's nothing to report tomorrow, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> and um, on Tuesday we're back in action, and uh, you can see we have the Empire State Manufacturing um, Index. So it's a mid, uh, yeah, mid heavy <laughs> event. Um, and apart from that, not too much happening as well. You can see on Wednesday and Friday, not too much um, heavy-wise happening. But all, on Thursday, we have uh, unemplo unemployment claims on eight, at 8.30 and um, existing home sales. But And also, if you're trading crude oil, the crude oil inventories will, of, of course, report about these events each day. So you can set your alerts nicely and be 
prepared for each session. And just be so, careful, it's on the Thursday, not the Wednesday. I wonder, is there something going on Wednesday as well? See, uh, that is a good point. Yeah, we yeah. have to figure that out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. usually the, those numbers, the crude oil numbers come out on Wednesday. Um, so interesting, we'll dig into that as well. But um, obviously, they're coming out on Thursday. So um, yeah, keep an eye out on that. So don't forget it. Uh, not that you're like trading crude on Thursday. You get hit by the numbers and then you uh, find yourself stuck in a position or something like that. So be aware of that um, to take care of that. Um, apart from that, um, that is it FA wise. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, let's take a look at the charts right now. I wish you a wonderful Sunday evening or Sunday afternoon, wherever you are. And I'm happy to see you all back on Tuesday then. Have a good one. And Kiran, you're muted if you're talking. Oh, good. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yes, I do not want to have those. Thankfully, you're around because they have to be more, far more often than they should. <laughs> Anyways, nice one. Right, let's uh, let's kick it off here. I was just saying that the crude oil market is definitely um, looking strong. Uh, what, a, what a fantastic market to uh, trade as well lately. It's easy when you know the direction, I suppose. <laughs> Anyways, let's take a look at ES here first. So with that, we, again, try not to get too uh, too stuck on a particular side. It's, of course, in the lower time frames, for obvious reasons, the market goes up and down rapidly. <laughs> um, in this particular analysis, this is a higher, higher time frame analysis, so take it as you wish. Keep in mind that the, um, the kind of, what would you say, the underlying out there is not great, and we're getting some signs here that things are kind of cooling off a little bit but again weekly time frame we begin no real damage done here to be honest yes we took back most of the christmas rally we'll say um but we put in a pretty decent bounce here uh again in and off the 21 here the 21 ema but the momentum is weak here um, at this moment in time we're on a weekly time frame and it's pushing to the downside at this moment in time. so that's not a good sign it's looking at this moment like there is decent potential for continuation here again nothing is going to be confirmed until to be honest on a weekly time frame obviously early signs of weakness if we start to break back down below that 45 48 area but i can't really say that we're getting bearish i will say uh, until we start to close or begin to close at least weeklies below that 42 60 area and we're a long way off that at this moment in time so that's it from the weekly nothing too bearish really to say um, yes, we've got some news, but we don't want to fight that trend in today thinking, oh, everything has to go down because when the bounces come, they come hard and they come fast. And you don't want to get in the way of those uh, for obvious reasons. So on the daily time frame, then we have put in this top as kind of a nice looking top here or somewhat of a top here. And we are now finding supply where we would expect to find supply, which is interesting. So for that obvious reasons, invalidation or early invalidation then is going to be above that 4750. Um, obviously being careful as we approach the previous resistance level at the 4808 and onwards and upwards if and when we do manage to get above there. Um, again, long way off that even at this moment in time, but we are very much bullish. Still, we haven't even broken structure really to the downside on the daily time. Where that begins to happen is going to be between this 45.20 area and this 44.92. We start to close dailies below this guy. Even below that 45.20, I'm going to get that early signs of weakness. And then the pullbacks are going to be very much um, um, shorting opportunities, um, looking for that potential continuation or putting a little bit more um, probability, a, a little bit more of a likelihood, let's say, on that potential continuation to the downside, as opposed to where we're standing at the moment, which is... I mean, look at these tails. These are pretty. <laughs> there's demand here. You know, you don't want to. You don't want to be fighting that, <clears throat> of course. So let's take a look at the the four hour here. <clears throat> and let me just switch on some of the four hour levels. It'll be a little bit more noisy, but there's yeah, not a huge amount. Much the same. I mean, ah, oh, let me just go back to the daily for a second and see. Yeah, the daily. I, I said the bullish scenario. I said the bearish scenario. Okay, we're covered. Um, so. This could just become a, another higher low, of course, if we do manage to recapture and continue on its merry way. 
four hour is very much in line with the daily in fact if we if we get above this clear i mean it's a clear zone here up here between this uh, call it 47 40 to 47 43 this little range here um we start to close even a four hour above that it's going to be um i will be happy to get on board or hunt aggressively alongside in that case keeping in mind we have that top of the range here um early signs of strength i mean we're yeah we're, we're putting in a higher low at this moment in time if we can start to close above this previous area here about this where we are now if we can start to close as we open maybe tomorrow or i mean it's going to be a little bit skewed now because the data coming in from tomorrow's session is not going to be the best um information wise probably the best better to wait for the tuesday session to come on board to get to get some more information but anyways back above this pack here call it let me just get a level off back above this pack here uh the 46 90 25 is going to be a decent sign that there is a, a likely continuation back to the upside again that 47 13 level is a minor level i have in here so back above the pack first again i'm hunting long anyways in fact i'm hunting both sides of the market looking for weakness to come in but um keeping these levels in mind um, as we go so 47 13 to the upside and then eventually looking for um, potential uh, weakness to come in in that key area because if you were to get on the short side of course where your risk is tightest is going to be the best opportunity because obviously as I mentioned if we start to break and hold above this level um, that's going to be a clear um, invalidation of the trade idea which is a really good way to, to manage the risk we'll say so continuation to the downside obviously early signs of weakness below this 46.22 um, um, but continuation then below that 45.96 if we get and hold the four hour below that 45.96 area I expect then a test down into this kind of zone I have here with these three lines this first stop target at the 45 49.50 area but ultimately I don't really feel um, uh, too much um, to get on board the long side until we can come down and put a decent test or break of course of these next level set downside the same as the daily the 4520 and then ultimately the 4492 being that early sign of weakness in the higher higher time frames but given that same fact that I just mentioned to the upside if we can get down here and then start to put in that a decent consolidation maybe a little bit of a look below and then a recapture that's going to be also information of potential um, continuation to the upside or even we might just get stuck in a range here as we are basically um, for uh, who knows for an extended period of time of course we can't tell the future we can just tell um, where we um, see potential and if and when that does of course buying the bottom of the range is going to be the best case scenario and selling the top of the range is going to be the best case scenario so just to keep those potentials in mind at this moment nothing really in between ish as you can see we're basically in the middle of the range you don't want to do too much first this is different on a higher time frame or sorry on a lower time frame but like i said early signs of strength is going to be a, a four hour close above basically where anywhere we are now at this moment in time uh, so that's it from ES let's take a look at the COT actually let's take a look at the Russell and see where we're going so the Russell is not giving us that strength coming in and as we know small caps uh, tend to lead the large caps so to keep that in mind this is decent information we are still finding demand though down in this area surprisingly enough um, so when we fail to see that demand <laughs> to keep it simple that's going to be a very powerful uh, source of information to keep in the back of our mind looking into those higher time frame equities of course sorry, higher time frame, those bigger cap equities <laughs> um, below basically that 20 2100 area is looking like that early signs of breakdown and then potential continuation which should then lead into the, the likes of um, the es um, so to keep an eye on that obviously that invalidation is going to be we start to break back up here and much in line with the es basically we do some damage in the middle of range and early signs then above that 2280 but we're nowhere near that in fact likelihoods at this moment in time i mean how many times can we test a level before it runs out of that demand again i guess forever until it does <laughs> is the right answer but of course it, it should in theory get weaker and weaker but again we don't want to get too ahead of ourselves so let's take a look at the cut report real quick not a lot actually has changed which is much in line with kind of the market we're kind of sideways in a way or we're kind of indecision you could say um following last week there was a little bit of a tick up here in the in the uh, data and a little bit of a tick down so there was a little bit of selling going into the small bit of last week um from the commercials and a little bit of a buy in the little bit of a pullback that we had from the institution so not a lot has changed really we're still looking very much bullish we're still um, um the commercials are selling in of course 
these aren't as powerful on the equities indexes um, because of all the hedging etc etc but still information nevertheless and um, the commercials are pushing this are selling into rallies which is what you want to see in a strong market state if this starts to continue or starts to turn around here maybe start to trend in a different direction then we get a little bit more from, from this basically nothing new um, and nothing else to report in that so let's move on in that case and take a look at gold <coughs> so gold <laughs> How long can this continue? I guess forever as well. But we're going sideways here. Anything to note from the inventory on gold? I mean, gold is still looking fairly strong in this particular case. If we start to uh, momentum wise, if we start to take out here and put in another all time high on momentum, this is a pretty hidden, pretty decent hidden divergence here um, to the bull side. Um, to see where this goes but obviously if the rest of the market start to pull back i mean gold isn't immune from any of that um, no matter what people think uh, it tends to go as well so to keep that uh, in mind but where are we nowhere really nothing has changed <laughs> we're sideways um, as we've been for quite a while uh, we have closed the back above our moving averages but i mean at this stage basically the moving averages are like, oh, yeah, i mean they've been like that for a while but yeah, it's information nevertheless but sideways in a sideways ranging market basically moving averages are practically useless i suppose is an easy way to look at it. but we are closing above the puck here and we are holding one two three four five six seven i mean we're we're getting demand here the buyers are sitting in this particular area so this is the puck for the entire range and we can see that there is demand here so this is demand pressure um trying to hold this market up which is information um obviously uh, nothing has changed early signs of strength Above that 1837.50 continuation, above that 1879.50, um, 1919.2 is going to be a serious sign of strength, but ultimately the bull party is on above that 1966. Um, for me, if we can close a weekly above, uh, again, it's going to be very strong signals if we can break above these previous dimension levels, but the party party is is on if we can break above that 1966. For me, that would mean that we're probably going to go on our next leg to the upside, not just do this kind of choppy choppy. We, we should have a decent push uh, if, if and when that does happen. Otherwise, that to the downside, much the same, we have these levels and the same rules apply. Early signs and, uh, of weakness is going to be below that 1758 area. You're going to see this on the daily. This was the key level we've had for a while. <clears throat> then below that 1721 that's where i start to get bearish if we can close to be honest a weekly below that 1721 i expect then that continuation to the downside yes we have a potential test of this 1677 call it 1678 area um looking for a potential uh bouncing continue given there is demand here but a weekly close below that 1721 for me at this moment would expect that not to put up too much of a fight and continuation to the downside then in that particular case on the weekly so let's take a look at the daily so on the daily yeah stuck in a range there's <laughs> not a whole lot to say i mean the levels are basically the same daily level uh, but uh, again a daily close below this 1754 especially if we can't even break some of this resistance here uh, between 1829 to 1837.50 here if we can't break above this uh, resistance zone i think that's a very bad sign of course um early signs of weakness is going to be back below that 1785 to 1791 um expecting there is i mean anything can happen it's gold after all we could come down and bounce off that 1758 to 1754 area and look to put on another leg to the upside but to me if we do get a daily close below that level then to be honest that's going to be that early sign of weakness um, and with that early sign of weakness, then I would expect that then to continue into those weekly kind of um, scenarios that, that I expect to play out. And much to the upside, we start to break above these levels, then I would expect that to look like it's going to continue on its merry way um, from the daily perspective. And again, as we get into the four hour, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot going to change on this particular asset, to be honest. So let's do that before we move on. And let's stick on our four hour. There's not a whole lot extra in that particular case. We got some early information or minor levels in here to play with, but other than that, there's not a whole lot changed. We're in the same ma major levels above this 13, uh, sorry, 1837.50, which has been a key level. Then we get these tests, uh, potential onwards and upwards, and then below again, early signs below this. You can see this kind of small cluster here, demand after we broke back after getting rejected below that 80, 1785. If we start to close the four hour below there, I mean, the lows are pretty much um, 
in below that anyways at the 1785 we don't need to wait I would expect um, continuation if and when we get a close below that level and obviously um, if we come down and tag it the pullbacks then are going to be decent opportunities for that continuation trade onwards and downwards um, keeping in mind of course we could but um, given the weakness and the lower highs and etc etc all the kind of criteria in place um, the likelihood for continuation is then on the cards. I have a minor level there at the 1770, but then we don't really, until we get down into that kind of 58 to 54 area, find some um, decent potential for support. Below that then, obviously, same as the daily, bar a few minor levels I have on here um, to consider uh, for me. But other than that, th these are just information purposes as opposed to um, defending levels, you could say, after, after we start to break down some of those higher time frame levels, we could say. so. But again, a bit wishy-washy because the momentum from the from the indicator there that uh, included with the open interest I didn't mention, but included with the open interest is slightly showing a different story. But we'll see, we'll see, we'll see of course um, how this plays out. So let's take a look at another internal kind of uh, chart to get some information and see what we can get. So again, not a lot has changed <coughs> from the gold side uh, last week either. A little bit of a flutter um, in the data so nothing new to report basically um, higher highs and higher lows um, in the commercials it generally <laughs> says that the market is tilting somewhat bearish um, as it makes its way back uh, towards being bullish but are, are, are the, the commercials are buying in to a down market which is the normal uh, case um, they did have a little bit of a deviation where we thought they were selling or breaking out of this kind of trend to the downside but nothing ever it, there was no follow through basically and we look like we're looking to break back in and these are this is the, the smart money you could say and it looks like these guys are uh, um, positioning for a potential bearish scenario we'll see as more data comes in and as we can see the um, institutional players are also again the smart money and they are basically looking again nothing has confirmed we're still sideways basically you can say or indecision but it's looking like potentially they are going to um, start to offload or start to continue to sell into this market but we shall see of course um, but other than that nothing too exciting I'm afraid um, nothing no big changes from this better to stick with the price action uh, rather than looking at this for any uh, kind of potential direction you could say so let's take a look at crude oil now this is the market <laughs> of all markets so this is the market to be traded pretty decent nothing too much <laughs> to say uh, up <laughs> trade trade in the up direction and you'll be fine um, yeah we've we've come down we put in yet another higher low um, we didn't break that weekly level. We, we, we caught it to the upside and we just haven't looked back since we broke back above our moving averages Everything is pointing strength. Um, it looks like we're basically about to tackle this 85-42 level um, Early signs of weakness, but it's not even going to be weakness. It's going to be a break below that a weekly close below that 76.98 I don't see that happening anytime soon at this moment in time If and when it does that would be that early sign of weakness and Then we could look for that potential breakdown at least then to retest that 61.82 At this moment in time it looks like onwards and upwards is going to be the case which means we break above this 85.42 we put in some sort of consolidation or even a pullback somewhere in here for another higher low and then we look for that continuation um, my next level to the upside is on this weekly time frame is going to be the big fat round number <laughs> so pretty obvious uh, 100 bucks um, and beyond that then I have some minor levels 107 112 and 114 and there's not a whole lot again above that next level to the upside is going to be that 147 level uh, how that plays out or if and when it does I don't know how that's going to affect everything economy wise and etc etc but it's definitely not going to be uh, good news for gold I put it that way um, they are normally somewhat let's say inversely correlated uh, by the, by the most part anyways you can say that they're basically inversely correlated so higher price of course I mean running those big bloody trucks to pull the bloody stuff out of the ground uh, for obvious reasons is going to have an impact on the actual market itself so um, yeah it's going to be costly <coughs> anyways uh, where are we do 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 on to crude so on the daily let's see um, do, do, 
nothing really to say. I mean, straight up, <laughs> it's just hard to fight. <laughs> He's going at these minor little pullbacks, and it just continues on its merry way. So, uh, it's what you want to see in a bull market. I mean, I can't really even get bearish on a daily time frame. Of course, if we fail to continue higher here, um, and we put in this rejection up in this 85.40 area, early signs of weakness. Again, it's probably very, very early signs of weakness. Let me just make sure I have my daily levels on. I'm pretty sure they are on. They are on. Um, before I was like, I get a bit noisy. Yeah, the daily levels are on. So let me just close this again. So yeah, early signs of weakness is going to be back below this 81.40 area, we'll call it. But to be honest, I can't really start to get bearish until we start to break and hold a daily. Below, we'll call it 77, uh, to be on the safe side. So below this 77 area um, would be early signs of weakness on the daily time frame. And then I would look to see what happens in our areas of interest. So between that 74.23 to 73.34, um, looking for that potential. Uh, you know, you can see the, the clear potential for that, that structural tag there before <clears throat> we look for potential more upside. But realistically, it doesn't flip bearish until uh, much in line with the weekly till we start to get back below the 61.74 to 62.43 area. Um, so uh, on si uh, to stay on side with this market is probably the best case scenario, which means buying pullbacks. <laughs> it's simple as that. Don't, don't try and fight this trend because even if you do get little flutters to the downside, they turn around pretty quick. And, I mean, you don't want to be um, fighting a trend in this particular uh, case when it's, when it's as strong you Say. Of course, it can't change, and there's, it's kind of strange because there is conflicting information out there. But, uh, anyways, until the market starts to show those signs of weakness, it's best not to get in front of it. Of course. So, let's take a look at the four hour now and zoom in a little bit. Kick on some of these four hour levels. Are they not off? They're on. Okay, there we go. Ah, it's just a little bit more noisy. But where could we see early signs of weakness on the four hour? Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be basically the same as the daily. It's not looking likely to be honest, but let's cover it anyways. Continuation is gonna be again, as I said, uh, above that 85.41. I'm gonna be hunting aggressively um, um, once we do open maybe on Tuesday for those continuation pullbacks. Aggressive pullback into that 83.10, 83.96. I have a level here, but um, early signs of potential trend fail of course we failed to put in a new high would be something to look for but we get back below this 81.39 or 81.40 as I mentioned from the daily it's going to be that early sign of weakness so if we get below that um, on a four hour close four hour time frame below that we'll be looking for that potential support to come in between that 80.50 and 80.80 would say um, um, to see where that bounce but then it's caution on the bounce, as in the bounce may wane or I'll be looking for that weakness in that particular case if we do get that close below that level. But if and when it happens, of course, it's still pullbacks or buying opportunities, it's just don't get in the way of the pullback in that particular case. Wait for that to kind of show signs of strength if and when it does begin to turn around and then look to get back on board as opposed to try and fight it to the downside, you know, trying to buy it on its way down, waiting. And that's giving that early sign of weakness. And, and, and nothing changes onwards and downwards if we do start to continue into those previously mentioned daily levels which um, which again we're a long way off at this moment in time staying on trend is buying the pullbacks long story short I won't get too on I won't continue going too much on with that one so let's take a look um, this is the funny one this is the funny one so um, it, actually there's not a there's not a massive change in any of these markets from last week very small change in, 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 either, in either of them uh, but it's looking like institutions are continuing to sell as this market is going higher as opposed to buy as this market is going higher. So this is information. Again, we want to wait for the market to tell us that it's starting to potentially turn around. But this is information. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm patiently waiting, waiting, waiting to see those signs of weakness come in. I'm um, just not seeing them yet. So staying on that pullback is buying opportunities at this moment in time until we do see that weakness or until we do see some of this data change, i.e. this start to roll back over to the downside maybe. But commercials are buying as the market is going up and keep in mind they're basically the hedgers. Um, so it's unusual. They're normally on the opposite side of the trend. Um, so again, 
take with that as you wish. Not a huge change from last week. I'm watching it closely for that potential um, weakness to come in because it should lead up for a decent opportunity if and when it does come in or when it does come in sometime in the future. It's just you don't want to get in front of it assuming you're going to pick the top, of course. All right. So without further ado, let's take a look at the magic internet money. Good old Bitcoin. Um, uh, to be honest, I'm looking for cheaper Bitcoins. So <laughs> let's hope it comes further. Um, it's not looking great on the monthly time frame. So we did break below that simple moving average as mentioned, 10 simple here. We came back and we tested it from the underneath and we're looking like continuation here again, only halfway through the month here. So um, take that with a pinch of salt at this moment in time. If we start to close back above this uh, sometime before the end of the month, that's of course going to be information. Um, where is that moving average currently sitting at this moment in time? It's currently sitting, what's this? This is the dollar. So roughly about 46, let's just turn it on and see. Um, 47,000 even we'll call it, 47,000 even, there we go. So if we start to close back above 47,000 before the end of the month, that is gonna be information for Bitcoin and that's gonna be early signs of strength. Um, to be honest, if we can get back above this 53, then I, I look, I would look m a lot more serious for that potential continuation to the upside. But at this moment in time, it looks very like um, a stronger probability of downside. Again, that's only at this moment in time. Of course, that can change. So that's the monthly quick glance at the month. On the weekly time frame, it's much in line with the monthly. Uh, all the moving averages are starting to, the, the ones I'm looking at anyways, are starting to move to the downside. They're pointed to the downside now and they're looking like continuation. We're getting supply coming in, the demand is weak. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, judging from the kind of uh, fundamental news out there, do people have less money or do they have more money given the fact that everything costs more um, and all this kind of stuff that's going on around there. So. Uh, Expendable income is probably less, in my opinion, it seems to be the case. So the cost of living, even though uh, people might have a little bit more uh, cash lying around, the kind of tendency is probably to hold on to it, given the way things are moving expensive ways. Uh, you know, they don't want to be stuck offside uh, or, or, or spend freely, given the fact that they don't know where this is going, we'll say, in the short term anyways. So that probably means that speculation uh, i mean this is probably one of the highly highly um speculated markets in the world <laughs> but again if you're an investor who cares <laughs> because bitcoin I mean, in the long run at least um is is up so waiting for that decent buy opportunity that's what i'm doing I'm just sitting on the sidelines patiently patiently waiting for those signs of strength to come in and then just jumping on board you know, that's and keep your keep Keep your um, keep yourselves peeled to this because you will get those early signs um, if, you, if you follow us and subscribe or whatever. <laughs> get the plug in while I'm at it, or yeah, yeah, and feel free to subscribe and like or whatever it is that uh, uh, YouTube algorithm loves. Um, that would help us out, of course. Um, yeah, but keep if if you are following this market, this seems to be the the place where um, most of uh, would say currently are. Um, our analytics is coming from uh, the crypto side, the Bitcoin side. And if you have anything else you want us to look at, please do drop it in uh, the comments for us. But um, okay, so I'll stop babbling. Um, yeah, stay tuned because we'll give you that early kind of indication that you may be looking for, or at least um, get an idea uh, when it's a good time to step in front of this market. And now is not the time, in my opinion. You know, probably going to get yourself in trouble. Uh, uh, again, the bounces will come hard and fast. Don't get me wrong. Um, everybody, uh, there is extreme fear and everything else out there. It's normally signs of potential turnarounds, but you don't want to assume that until it happens, of course. Keep that in mind. That's all. Okay. Don't want to keep up. Sorry. Anyways, weekly, early signs of strength above that 50, 30,000. Continuation is going to be below that 39,600. Below that 39,600, there's a pretty strong chance that we're going to come straight down and test that 28,800. And then we want to see what happens when that happens. We start getting below that. Great. <laughs> we'll see what happens. 10 grand Bitcoin. Come on, 10 grand Bitcoin. <laughs> that means I get to stack a lot more than I expect. So anyways, let's see. <laughs> let's take a look at the daily. Um, 
yep, m not much change from the day below this guy. Um, early signs of continuation. I have that level here uh, between that 28800 where we, we may stall out somewhere between the 34 6 area basically. If we do get below this um, 39 6, uh, 34 6 is going to be a decent area to consider maybe for some potential bounce, but again, it's only going to be a bounce. Looking for that maybe potential continuation to the downside at this moment in time. I mean, we're bearish, we're, we're trending lower basically, um, almost on all time frames um, up to that weekly time frame. Um, we're nearly there on the weekly, uh, it, would, it would be confirmed basically on the weekly if we do break down that level for me. Um, so <clears throat> let's see, nothing too exciting. Uh, bullish on the daily time frame, early signs of strength, a recapture of this. <clears throat> what is that level? Let me see. 45.5, I believe. Yeah, 45.5. Here we go. So an early uh, early sign of strength is going to be a capture of that 45.5. Um, or we continue to hold down in this kind of demand zone. It's not going to be a bad area for considering a trade uh, because if we do hold this area, and this was very much like this area back in the past, if we do manage to hold this area like we did, taking little shots down in the bottom of this area here, obviously, is going to be a decent opportunity. This is your area of invalidation below here, so taking your shots as close as you possibly can to your area of invalidation then allows you, you know, to get off um, at, a, at a, a small cost, you could say, um, if it does break to the downside. Or you wait for that confirmation to the upside and you look to get on board if and when that does happen. Early signs of strength above 45,500, and then of course um, breaking above this 52,000 area is going to be a decent sign of strength, much in line with all those previously higher time frame levels that we already mentioned. But for me, if we can get above this 52 level, that's going to be very, I'd be very, very happy, I would say, or a lot happier um, to hunt for that potential 100k that everybody talks about, you know, so on and so forth. But right now, um, be careful. To the long side, anyways. Let's take a look at the four hour to see can we see a little bit more information. So, um, we're currently consolidating <coughs> at this 42,800 area. We had a little bit of a look below here, took out the stops below this guy, and we are trying. I give Bitcoin that much, but this isn't looking too great at this moment in time. Back below this guy is 42,800. That's going to be. Um, strong probability of a retest down into this zone basically um, top of that box where is the top of that box top of that box is 41.3 uh, 45 40,500 and then ultimately 39.6 if this fails to hold though yeah I, I expect continuation at least down to test this guy somewhere in this zone here between that 45.5 and that 39.6 or is that 40.5 and 39.6 and then we'll see more information beyond that beyond that then even a, even a four hour close beyond that 39.6 I expect that potential continuation then onwards and downwards to come in and I mean the levels are basically the same above this 45.5 early signs of strength this is, this is trying I mean Bitcoin is trying don't get me wrong above this 42.8 was um, a decent early sign of strength and the fact that it isn't just rolling over and going straight back down again is something to hold on to at this moment in time but again it's very very minor the volume is poor in here i'm pretty sure let's take a look quick look at the volume here i have the indicators turned off hold on so the volume is yeah i mean now when you want to see you know somebody needs to show up here um nothing really to say about that i mean the volume is pretty pretty crap in here uh, until it's not if we can get a decent even even some decent buyers come in spike up a little bit of volume here to the upside or even next is obviously a, a spike to the downside um, sellers are basically dominant at this moment in time and at this very very moment in this kind of sideways price action nobody's dominant everybody is, is, is got to sleep as they say if we can get above that 45.5 sign of strength we have this pack here this would be my my zone at the 47 that'd be my early sign uh, my early entry um green light um <clears throat> i will be hunting shorts if i was looking for them into these areas for that same invalidation area but above here then those shorts are off the table and i will be looking for those trades potentially um onwards and upwards to kind of get those early entries <coughs> For that potential break then into that for, uh, that 52 zone so i will be looking to get on board uh maybe for some long upside 
keeping in mind I have these areas of interest which I will be looking at just for information. If we can smash through them, happy days. If we start to show those signs of weakness, then I'm going to be cautious and maybe get off and wait for further information. But if we can continue onwards and upwards, then that would be my decent early entry for a smash or at least a decent test of that 52. And then if we can break that 52, as I mentioned, we get onwards and upwards. If we just run up, we may also uh, we may just run up all the way back up to this 52 and we may just roll it back over again this might just turn into a big range for what's in line with the potential with the equities maybe we range for several months here um, and and let all this kind of settle this kind of news that's out there settle down and then eventually we just roll up and, and head on our merry way of course being prepared that anything can happen is going to be uh, the best case scenario um, so that's it for me uh, nothing too exciting I'm afraid else to add and um, we don't have any additional altcoins at this moment in time but feel free to add them if you wish or any other assets that you'd like us to have a look at um, other than that hope you have a great week ahead and as we kind of mentioned some way through the video uh, we won't be do uh, doing a daily prep video tomorrow because the markets are basically closed so we will see you um, bright and early Tuesday morning for our pre-market prep uh, for the trading day ahead. So until then, big bye for me. And two seconds. Ciao, baby. Big bye from Daniele, <laughs> and we will catch you all very soon. Bye, everybody. Have a good one.